Meadowcroft Rock Shelter and Historic Village is located just outside the small town of Avella in Washington County, Pennsylvania. We're less than an hour from Wheeling and Steubenville, Ohio. At Meadowcroft, you can see and understand what life was like for people in the Upper Ohio Valley over the span of 16,000 years. From the Meadowcroft Rock Shelter, which is an archaeological site that has shown people have been in the Upper Ohio Valley for 16,000 years, to our recreated 16th century Indian village and our 19th century rural village, where you can see what life was like for people who settled here uh, in the 19th century. The theme that ties everything together at Meadowcroft is how people have interacted with this environment and used the natural resources here to survive and to build a better life for their families. And that goes for the Paleo-Indians, who were the first Americans uh, on the continent 16,000 years ago, to those who settled in the 18th century from Europe, to those who remained and established villages later into the 19th century. I'd like to welcome you all to the latest edition, our latest edition here at Meadowcroft. It's our 16th century Native American village. And this is a work in progress. We have been working on this area for about three years, and we still have a lot more work to do. Uh, the time period is the late 1500s, and the tribes that we are getting information from to create this area are the Shawnee, the Seneca, and the Monongahela people. Now, no one particular tribe lived in this area, but they all had similarities. They were a forest-centered people, and they all learned to live off of whatever nature provided for them. Now, the area that you pass through coming in here is known as a palisade, and each of those tribes that I spoke about lived in a palisaded village. And the palisade was actually built to protect the villagers from warring tribes. They really didn't have to worry much about wild animals getting into their village because they did have domesticated dogs. And the dogs would have scared off any animals that tried to get into this village. Now building this palisade wall was not an easy job for the Native Americans. We are talking at a time before Europeans had ever made it into this part of what is now known as Western Pennsylvania. So the Indians living here had no knowledge of anything European. They had never seen an iron or a steel tool. They only had tools made of either stone or bone or wood. And if you tried to knock down a tree or chop down a tree do, using a stone ax, it would be impossible. So to build the palisade wall, they would use a stone ax, but they would also use fire and clay. They would take clay and they would pack it around the tree and that they intended to use as a post for their palisade. Then they would build a fire around the base of that tree and it would burn up until it reached the actual piece of clay and it would stop burning. They would take their stone ax and they would start to chip away at the charred area that was burned, thus causing the tree to fall over. Now you have this large log lying on the ground, but you only need about a 13 foot post. So in order to cut that to the correct length, they would actually strategically build fires at various lengths along the, the log in order to burn it and sever it into posts. That's why if you notice the upper portion of the palisade, it's charred. When you uh, char wood by burning it, you actually harden it. So that keeps the insects from eating it and the water from rotting it away. Then the post is set. And in the case of our palisade, we had to get saplings and use a basket weave to weave in and out. And our palisaded wall is about two thirds of the way completed and eventually it will encircle the entire village. And once that is finished, it would be about 100 feet across this village. And it would have been home to approximately 50 to 60 villagers. And they would have lived in housing units called wigwams we have two completed. We have one that is in a state of um, beginning construction. We have one that the framework is completed and we are applying uh, poplar bark, which they would have used either poplar or elm bark or cattail matting in order to cover these. And we would probably need one or two extra wi or wigwams more to complete the housing demands of a village this size. 
Every village would have a central fire pit. They would kind of use this for their ceremonies and celebrations. They always had a drying rack and they would have dried various items on that. When you do come to visit us here at Meadowcroft, you will be invited to enter one of four, or each of four different areas that we have here at the Woodland Encounters. Upon entering, you will be told about the gifts of the land, which the Native Americans living in this area about uh, five, six hundred years ago, needed a lot of items that they could not acquire from the area that they lived in. They would have had to go outside of this area. They would have had to trade with other tribes to acquire various things. We didn't, for example, have a source of flint in this immediate area. The Native Americans living here would have needed to use flint to make the arrowheads and tools for them, for them to do their work. So they would have actually had to trade with Native Americans coming from Flint Ridge, Ohio. That was our closest source of flint to this area. So they would have traded with Indians coming from that area. So in the gifts of the land, many of the trade items that were used in this area will be explained. When you head up to the hunting area, you will be pretending to go many miles from the actual Palisaded Village to go into a hunting camp that the Indians would have established. They would have gone there to hunt the various animals that were found in the area. Once you've left the hunting area, you will be going into the gardening area, and you will be taught about how the Native Americans did establish a system of agriculture. They grew the three sisters' crops, and it became very beneficial for the Indians because they did start to depend on the crops that they grew. After that, you will be heading down to our Atalatl range, and an Atalatl was a prehistoric hunting weapon you will get to try your hand at using this weapon. You will be giving a, given a few instructions on how to use it. And then we have a, a, an elk that you will use as the target and you will use the atlatl then to try to bring down that elk because the women were the farmers and they had a lot of crops growing in that garden, but the men were the hunters. So we'll see who can do better at getting the elk with that atlatl to provide food for the villages. In our 19th century village, you'll see a working blacksmith shop where you can watch the blacksmith hammer out iron and steel at the anvil. You'll go for a visit in the one-room schoolhouse to sit through a lesson 19th century style. You'll also visit one of our log houses, the Miller Log House, to see what life was like in the early 19th century. And of course, strolling across the covered bridge brings you into the 19th century area. In the Miller Museum, you can see exhibits about barns in western Pennsylvania. We have 19th century photographs. And we also have exhibits about the museum founders, Albert and Delvin Miller, the two brothers that started Meadowcroft in the 1960s. We also have exhibits of horse-drawn vehicles, including a hearse, a covered wagon, and other horse-drawn vehicles. The Meadowcroft Rock Shelter is an archaeological site that has been designated a National Historic Landmark. This is a site that was used as a campsite by people as far back as 16,000 years ago. The site was first discovered by Albert Miller on November 12, 1955, when he came across a freshly dug groundhog hole. Albert sifted through the material the groundhog excavated and found some artifacts. He began the process of trying to find a professional archaeologist to investigate, and by 1973, Dr. James Adivasio of the University of Pittsburgh visited the site and asked for permission to carry out a field school for his students. It wasn't too far into the 1973 season that they realized this site was older and much deeper than anyone had anticipated. By 1974, the first radiocarbon dates came back from the Smithsonian Institution that showed this site had been used as far back as 16,000 years. Inside the site, you'll see evidence of campfires from those first people. You'll see uh, evidence of tools and uh, animal bones that were left behind. 
You'll also see how the archaeologists uncovered this evidence of people as far back as 16,000 years ago. Meadowcroft was not only the site of those early people, but it was also a site that was continuously used throughout that 16,000 year span. So we have evidence of people using this site throughout every major cultural time period in Eastern North America. I hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse of Meadowcroft and I encourage you to come visit for yourself so that you can see all that we have to offer here.